I have two CRTs in this video that need minor repair. The one on the bottom right I picked up for free and it was made in 1979 by Sears. Its RF module is not in the best shape so that's the main thing I gotta repair on this one. I picked the top one up off Facebook Marketplace for 25 bucks. It's made by GE of March of 2003 and has a junk load of inputs. Here's input one on the side. It also has an input one on the back an input two and an input three with an S video and a dedicated RF. This TV has three pits, one here, here, and here. Starting with a lens wipe, I open it up and then take it out and swish it, clean the area of any debris, and then grab my fix kit. I got mine off Amazon. It's by Rainex. What's in the box? This is the suction cup and base, resin chamber and pressure driver. Both of these items make up the repair device. Next is the clear resin, plastic sleeves, and a razor blade to razor off the excess resin. I'll start off by putting a paper towel down to catch any dripping resin from the glass. Now place the repair device over the first chip here. You want the resin chamber directly over that chip. Fasten it down so it's airtight. Load a few drops of resin in the chamber. Good. Now take your pressure driver, screw it in, but not all the way. You, you want to do it enough to where it just touches the glass and does not spill the resin out of the resin chamber. I gave this about seven minutes to set and then I unscrewed it. I'm going to go ahead and do this for my other two chips as well. When finished, take a razor blade, scrape any excess away, and then wipe it off. Yeah, it looks great. Here's an alternate way to do this. You take one of the plastic sheets, fill resin in each pit like so. Yeah, cool. Oh, are you going to come out? Oh, oh gosh, that's too much. Yeah, whatever. Let's just add more. Cool. And then you're just going to push on the area until there's no air left. And then after that, you're going to let it cure. For both methods, you're going to want to place the TV by a bright window and leave it for about two to three hours. Don't forget to razor any excess resin off and you're good. All right, now let's fix the RF module on the other TV. Yeah, this thing's pretty old. Ancient. All right, getting this thing on my bench, clean up the connection. Nice. Now I got to strip this off. Cool. One. Snip. Strip two. <sighs> Man, these things are strong. All right, got to strip this part too. Oh, gosh. All right, that wasn't that bad. <sighs> Ooh. Now strip this last one. Clean it up first. All right, stamp. And then pull. Good. <sighs> gosh, that was ridiculous. On to twisting these wires. Twist this one. And then the next one. Now I do this so it's easier to pre-tin these wires with solder to make an easier connection instead of like taking forever to melt everything in. Here, I'll show you. So now I'm pre-tinning, right? Pre-tinning this part. Pre-tinning that part. All right, looks good. Okay. And then pretending this one. Now we're putting it together. See? So then it flows so much easier and it looks so good. And then here is the same thing. So I pre tin both and then putting it together. Nice. Put my heat shrink down. Oh, go figure. Some of my shrinked, shrinked prior to I needing it shrinked. Ha ha ha. So now I just hit it with fire. Good. And then everything's finished. These two TVs came out so good. Honestly, I didn't know this bottom one was in color, but I'm happy it is. When you get close to the top one, those pits don't even look like they existed. Please remember to like and subscribe. Hey, and thanks for hanging, and I'll see you in the next video.